Now, the month that just passed, July, was the hottest ever. That's been confirmed by Global Data, and we're looking at it in our weekly feature, Going Green Tonight. Temperatures soared in Europe and Alaska. Ice melted in Greenland. Forests burned across Siberia. To discuss, we're joined by Bukelwa Nzimande, climate and energy campaigner for Greenpeace Africa. Thank you for being with us, Thank uh, Bukelwa. You. So, I mean... First question is, is this sort of what everybody has been fearing? Is, is the, the, the future that we hoped wouldn't, wouldn't happen, is, is it upon us, basically? It's the future that everybody was, ho was hoping wouldn't happen in our lifetime. Yeah. Um, and certainly you're correct in that these are the highest temperatures we've experienced. However, dating back from 2014 up till now, those are the record-breaking years. And it, what's certain is that it's definitely getting warmer with every year. Yeah. So um, it is definitely the future that we've been fearing. It's here, it's now, the climate crisis is at hand. Because it's not much higher than the same month in 2016. So three years ago, there was a very hot July. It's not much higher than that, but the fact is, yeah, the last few years yes. have, have been hot. Absolutely. From 2014 up till 2019, those are the, the top five hottest summers in Europe yeah. that's for certain and 2019 being the hottest um, it's indicative of something you know the temperatures are definitely getting higher and higher we don't know where yeah yeah is there any other explanation here beyond climate change so linking specific events or extreme events to climate change is, is, is complex because there are different atmospheric systems that are at play yeah. El Nino's absolutely and but what's certain is that what we're experiencing now is consistent uh, with the signals and the flags that are pointing towards a climate crisis, a climate emergency, and runaway climate change. So for certain, I think we can, we can uh, make those correlations um, that climate change, this is a definite signal, that this is what had been forecasted previously, uh, what we thought would never be in our lifetime, we're experiencing now. Yeah. Yeah. But is it clear enough? Because the debate still rages. I mean, is that frustrating? It, it is frustrating because there's so many uncertainties as to how we're going to experience climate change. There's so many uncertainties. However, the frequency at which these extreme events are taking place, the intensity and the impact of them are definitely going to intensify. Yeah. At what rate? Um, it's uncertain. I mean, scientists have come out to, with different projections, but we know that we're running out of time. Uh, and what the IPCC has raised, that we've got less than 11 years to actually basically turn around uh, climate runaway. And what I think is important is that those 11 years are not years for us to be indecisive and not take action. Yeah. They are years that we have, grace years, for us to actually make decisive actions, call governments um, to basically come up with policies that are definite and saying we're going to act now to ensure that uh, yeah. we are not... Um, further into um, or heading towards climate um, runaway, climate so, change. So explain climate run runaway because we often hear, yes, we're getting to a tipping point. Absolutely. And, and, and then you hear after that there's, there's no going back. So you're saying it's exactly the next 11 years. Yeah. Um, well, exact again yeah. being uh, an estimate. Okay, so let's uh, say a decade. A projection. <laughs> what happens if, if there's no action in the yeah. next 10 years? We've spoken about the uncertainties, but if there's no action, we're going to see more and more of these um, extreme weather events. Uh, we've had a few, uh, not only in Europe, just bring back home, we've had cyclones. Cyclones are not common, in, in, in especially in sub-Saharan Saharan Africa, but we're seeing more and more of those, and within a shorter period of time. Yeah. So what that's signaling towards is that there are going to be more extreme events, and we're talking droughts, we're talking shift in um, crop production, pests and disease. So it's going to come at us when nature is saying, I'm no longer going to be sensitive, but I'm actually going to release mm. my full wrath. And that's and, what we're starting to and see. And then at one point it becomes cataclysmic, but we don't know exactly Exactly when how and when. It's just yeah. that so the impacts are going to be felt much more, particularly by those who are most vulnerable, and we're seeing it happen a lot more. So, so there's, there's this marker of pre-industrial levels, sort of temperatures. Um, as I was looking at it, we're 1.2 degrees Celsius above that. Uh, in, in July, so, so that's more than one degree up. It doesn't sound like much, but Absolutely. it's very important. And actually what's important is the next level, 1.5. What happens mm. then? So um, you're right in saying that currently, or uh, if you're looking at um, the, where we are now, it's within 1 to 1.2. And already the impacts are, are drastic. Everybody's feeling them. And when we're speaking about a 1.5 cap, 
uh, at a global global averages, it's completely different to what I'm feeling here in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, the debate is that Africa is actually going to be in the in, in the face actually of some of these impacts. Where if we're looking at a 1.5 degree increase at global averages, Sub-Saharan Africa is going to have way more than that. Uh, where our summers are going to get um, hotter, and uh, there are going to be these change these changes uh, back to back. Um, so. You can't, you can't really pin it because yeah. we're looking at global averages. The, the Paris Agreement, all these global agreements, have they made any difference? Um, That's a big question. It's, 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 a, it's a big question because it, it, it looks at commitment. That if our um, head of states or representative of the states are committing to these treaties um, or these agreements, that there needs to be clear and decisive actions. Mm -hmm. And so far we haven't seen that. And if there isn't decisiveness in policy, it means that nobody can call um, the drivers of climate change per se, which are um, fossil fuel um, chained and driven industry is that they, if there's no certainty in policy, nobody's going to bother changing business as usual. We're going to see um, industry still dependent, heavily dependent on fossil fuels and not making a transition yeah. into renewables and greener energy sources. And, and South Africa doesn't seem to have the scope to be committed right now when we need to keep the, the coal fire stations burning to keep the lights on. Uh, d does the actions of, of smaller countries like ours count right now? Um, actually, in the broader scheme of things, South Africa is not a small player. Uh, we're one of the highest emitters um, as a developing country. Yeah. And um, science has proven that it's predominantly driven by our um, energy, um, sorry, our fossil fuel based um, industry mm. or rather energy production. So if we are wanting to make an impact, and at this point, because of the crisis that we're in, uh, it's pointless to, to, to point fingers and say you must act first. It should be collective action, specifically when we're seeing our own vulnerable communities and the poor in our own countries and spaces um, suffering at the hand of climate change. Yeah. So it's a call really for everybody to say we're going to take up the rain, we're going to start making um, policy, decisive policies and actions or pathways to ensure that we are at a place where the future is protected, where our people are protected and we're ensuring that we are we're turning back really, that the, the train right. is turning right back. Yeah. All right, we have to leave it there. Uh, but these next 11 years or so, crucial. Thank you very much Critical. for that explanation. Uh, Bukelwa Nzimande, uh, Nzimande, who is a climate and energy campaigner at Greenpeace Africa.